Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10th annual Sea Arthritis event. Yes, 10 consecutive years, ACE has attended the oh. annual. <laughs> ACE has attended the annual uh, Canadian Rheumatology Association and Arthritis Health Profession Association's annual scientific meeting. And I'm Kelly Lenvoy, VP of Communications and Public Affairs here at ACE, and I'm joined by our president, Cheryl Cohen. Cheryl, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, yeah, 10 years, and um, for our audience, who most will probably be familiar uh, with the program. Maybe we can start by talking about what is happening at this meeting in Winnipeg and what do we do each year when all of these really smart people get together and talk arthritis? Well, first of all, thanks, Kelly, uh, for having me on. This, uh, I know, is kicking off the program for this year, our event, Hashtag C Arthritis. Um, so it's always good to be first first out, uh, and and it's it's really the answer to this is super simple. For years before we started running the hashtag C Arthritis event, uh, I was going to research meetings and clinical meetings and sitting there as a patient, but also as a health educator, trying to figure out. First of all, what they were saying, you know, trying to demystify for myself what it is they were saying in medical uh, jargon or scientific jargon. And I thought to myself, geez, wouldn't it be great, given we are a primary provider of information and education that is evidence-based and research-based people with arthritis in the country uh, and around the world virtually because of the internet, I thought, why not do this during the meeting. Let's actually real-time transfer knowledge from these, as you call them, super smart people running around uh, making presentations on their latest research findings or clinical research findings. Why don't we sit down and actually talk to these people in language that we, meaning our collective audience, can understand uh, and do it at the time that the news is actually breaking, the time when doctors share it with doctors or scientists share it with scientists. So let's sit down and create a program where we, as interviewers, sit down in the studio with these experts and have them talk to us in ways that are immediately understandable. And if it's understandable, it means it's it's actionable by people like us, you know, people who are living with the disease. So that was that was where the idea came from. It was sitting around at meetings, listening to all this stuff, thinking, "Wow, wouldn't it be great if people like me could hear this in in real time and not wait for it to be published in a scientific journal, which can often take years in terms of the." Science, the research process, the an analysis process or the analytic process, and then the publication process. That process is a really long time. Meanwhile, there are people like me who are in need of the information. So that's where it really started and why. Yeah, and as, as you said, um, you know, these, these paper papers come out in peer-reviewed journals and are obviously written at a very high level. So I guess one of the things that we try to do is translate that into language that our audience will understand too. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and to do that in real time is just is super cool. And that's also at the time the the idea came forward to us. It was really driven by social media, Kelly. It was when Facebook uh, and then Twitter uh, first started to develop their live feeds. Now, most of the social media platforms have a live feed. Uh, and, and so it just seemed to be kind of a confluence of factors that, that made this a real possibility. And ACE never takes on something easy. It, it usually takes on something challenging. 
And it was a challenge in the first few years. We've gotten better and better at it. But uh, now we like to think that we know what we're doing. And a huge credit to our colleague, Anita Chan, uh, our director of programs and administration, who really is the backbone of this of this event. She makes sure that we show up on time and and are well organized and that our guests are well looked after and uh, and have the opportunity to talk to the public at large. So every year, the annual meeting has a theme. What uh, what is this year's theme in Winnipeg? Uh, yeah, so this year's theme is confluence and collaboration at the forks. So, okay. See, there, you got you to start trans, you have to I translate know. right there. I know. Yep. So well here it is. Here's the simple translation. Um, it's really about the coming together of all different types of researchers, clinicians who also do research. Patients now are, are now actively part of the meeting. Uh, other arthritis health professions, such as physiotherapists and occupational therapists, nursing, social work, are really coming together and the focus is on shared decision making, Kelly. That uh, long uh, highfalutin title really is uh, the focus on the meeting is about shared um, decision making and how different professions do it. What are some of the gold standards or best practices in shared decision making and how can we do more of it? So uh, I I'm actually, uh, the title notwithstanding, I'm super excited about the theme this year because it really shows an awareness on the part of health professionals that, first of all, what they do deserves to be shared, which has not been common practice, right? Usually silos of knowledge stay just there in their silo. So there's a recognition that siloing information doesn't help anyone themselves, their broader community of professionals, and certainly not patients. So I think it's really encouraging that the whole idea about shared decision making is, is, is the theme. Uh, and I suspect what we're going to hear from the meeting is also, how do you do it? How do you do it well? It's all fine and good to talk about sharing information, but there are best practices. There are ways to do it um, that, that can best ensure, ensure or better ensure that a given audience can hear it, can receive it, can act on it. Now, uh, when you're not interviewing people in Winnipeg, you're gonna be trying to attend some of the sessions. Are there any that you're looking forward to in particular? Yeah, I'm always excited to learn, like all patients, no matter what type of arthritis they've been diagnosed with or trying to live their best life with, Kelly, I'm always really excited about the advances in knowledge of specific diseases. I'm always excited about uh, what um, therapies are being investigated. So what are the, in the industry, in the pharmaceutical industry, they call it the pipeline. So what are some of the things that are coming through phase one, phase two trials? Uh, once they get to a phase three trial, which is in a larger number of people, we know that it's probably going to be filed to Health Canada for review. So, so sometimes we see data coming forward at the annual meeting that's pretty early on, and you don't really know if it'll ever see the light of day. Um, but it's always good to know about those things because Medicines or emerging therapies are one thing, but when you get to our end of the spectrum, how it's going to happen, practically speaking, through policy is a whole other uh, sort of kettle of fish, if you will. Uh, and that's an area that you and I work in every day. So I like seeing what's coming through at the beginning so that we can start problem solving at the other end well before something comes out into the to the marketplace, so to speak. Um, I'm also looking forward to some of the workshops that are coming uh, forward that are specific to shared decision-making. Um, there's a 
a really great young group of uh, uh, investigators, young researchers, people who people who are focused on their masters, who know they want to do a PhD, or people who are early career rheumatologists who want to get involved in research. All of those types of people are hosting or participating in uh, workshops that are going to tackle shared decision making. Um, so super excited. Shared decision making, Kelly, could mean how two professionals want to go about sharing information. When is the best time to share information? What types of information do we share? Do we include the patient in that information sharing process? How do we actually power it technologically? You know, so it's it's not just those two words, share or three words, shared decision making. It it's it's all of the nuts and bolts about shared decision making, I think, that are going to be discussed at the meeting that I'm looking forward to. What one of the highlights I know that we always look forward to as well as the the great debate. And this year they're going to be looking at electronic medical records and whether they save time and improve quality of care. Um, so I know you'll be you'll be there for that and probably reporting out on that. I think it's also interesting. They've added a, a new uh, series this year as well. And it's it's sort of on hot topics. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a mini version of the great debate. And that is they're looking at hot topics, uh, for instance, like long COVID and having um, doctors on either side of a uh, proposition or an argument uh, debating pros and, and cons. So I'm hoping that we're going to be able to speak to some of those people participating in those specific sessions. Um, they're often uh, highly informative and sometimes quite entertaining as well. Indeed. Also, my, one of my favorite things about the meeting is the poster sessions. Um, and, and as you well know, Kelly, having attended the meeting many times and the, uh, the American College of Rheumatology meeting, also the European League Against Rheumatism meeting, it is the poster sessions where, you know, big ideas can form. You're looking at someone's poster and you're having a discussion with them about, you know, what they, why they think the results of their poster were as, are, as they are. Uh, and and a new idea is formed about why. So the poster session, you know, if you could draw, make a little uh, drawing of it or a painting of it, it would be all these heads and the the question marks and the word why uh, sprouting out the top. And and it's where new projects are formed, and not just new projects, new collaborations. So it's, 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 you know, the person with arthritis like myself running into a longtime colleague in health services research and they say, hey, you know, Cheryl, I was thinking about X or Y and what do you think about that? And is there a potential? And then that's how ACE gets involved. We become a patient partner organization in that. And then we start, you know, brainstorming about the next question to be asked. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because... As our audience knows, um, healthcare uh, disparities and inequities is one of our public policy priority areas. Um, we spend a lot of time on that. And we are presenting a research poster uh, in Winnipeg. And maybe you can just preview that for for our listeners and audience. Sure. So uh, uh, hopefully some in our audience um, participated in this survey. And if they did, thank you so very much. Without your participation, uh, our own community-based research would not be possible. You, you are the engine of everything we learn. Um, the poster, Kelly, the formal title of the poster is Health Literacy and Arthritis Care in Canada the perspective of BIPOC individuals across age categories. So BIPOC meaning Black, Indigenous, and other peoples of color. Uh, we did what we call subset analysis on this larger survey on health literacy and arthritis care in Canada. The results of the larger survey have already been reported on in Joint Health Insight. We'll offer those links, I think, at the end of this interview. 
Um, but this specific subset analysis, Kelly, looked at the um, responses from BIPOC individuals participating in the survey. And we looked specifically where we saw big differences, Kelly, were in groups of BIPOC uh, individuals older than the age of 54 and BIPOC individuals who were younger than the age of 54. And, and we were looking at, at we were looking at their responses compared to white respondents. Non non BIPOC response, yeah. or white or white responses, correct? Right. And what we saw, Kelly, was uh, three sort of three big kind of, if you will, red flags. One was on uh, and health literacy. We have to remember can be defined as an individual's ability to find understand and use information and services to support their health. So very high level, kind of simple definition. And we know already from research that age and ethnicity are both determinants of health literacy, but we haven't really understood the effects of these variables uh, or, or haven't understood them as well for people living with arthritis. Um, so when we looked at uh, BIPOC uh, individuals versus non-BIPOC individuals, specifically those over 54 and those younger than 54, we saw three areas of health literacy that were really uh, uh, interesting, findings that were super interesting. One was on medications and understanding medication instructions. So this is a really important piece of self-care for arthritis, people living with arthritis, is understanding why you were prescribed the medication uh, and, and of course taking it. 24% um, of people over the age of 54 who were BIPOC responded that they knew how much and when to take their medication. Unbelievable, Kelly, versus 72%. So a massive difference. And I should say that our this BIPOC response respondent pool had actually fairly high levels of education uh, and, uh, and income. So food secure, housing secure, uh, as well as those who were non-BIPOC. In terms of exercise, we asked about the understanding of the purpose of exercise. So, uh, 27% versus 70%. So if you're the BIPOC respondents over the age of 54 that didn't understand the purpose of exercise as it relates to their arthritis, knowing how to participate in the exercise, actual exercise program or specific exercise, 23% versus 51%. And then having the confidence to participate regularly in the exercise, 10% versus 23%. So both quite low, but between the two age groups, statistically significant by a lot. And then thirdly, Kelly, in terms of nutrition, um, understanding the purpose of good nutrition, 24% versus 68%. Understanding nutrition labels. So really knowing every, every product you buy on the shelf today has a nutrition label on it. And what this says is folks who were older than 54 and in the BIPOC respondent pool said they did have great difficulty understanding what the label was presenting to them. In other words, they didn't understand the label of contents and didn't understand how it relates to them and how it relates to their health. Um, across all, lastly, I'll just say across all the age categories, Support meetings were a very popular self-care strategy, which is, I think, super uh, cool, super important amongst BIPOC when compared to white respondents in the same age category. So uh, people in across all ages in the BIPOC response uh, pools or pop population or respondents uh, considered those as very important, and they are. And then when, a, when asked what health information they needed the most, BIPOC respondents from all the age categories most often selected 
how to advocate for their own preferences and needs and where to find programs and services within the community. So um, we think these are really important findings. They are the ones that were statistically significant. And we're so uh, happy, obviously, that the, um, that the scientific committee of this year's annual meeting deemed this to be worthy uh, of a poster. So we're super excited to present it. Uh, and we'll be promoting uh, the poster through our social media channels. And we'll also offer a link uh, at the end of this uh, interview. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that preview. And a reminder to the audience that um, uh, the conference or me annual meeting starts on February 28th and runs to March 2nd. So um, come back to, to this dial here and uh, to the channel here and uh, you'll be able to start seeing those interviews starting on the 28th. Um, we're really excited to be bringing them to you in your homes or wherever you watch um, these episodes. And uh, we, we look forward to sharing that information with you. Cheryl, thank you for sharing your time with us today. It's um, my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I just want to say this, Kel, if folks um, are not subscribers yet and they just mm. simply want an email notice informing them when interviews go live, they just mm. need to go to www.jointhealth.org and hit the subscribe button. We don't bombard you with um, any commercials. There's no advertising. It's only about these information programs and specifically about hashtag C arthritis all in the next week. Great. Okay. Thank you for joining us, Cheryl. Thank you audience for joining us on this episode. And we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Bye-bye.